Hey, good evening out there. My name is LaRue Fitch, educational consultant from Chicago, Illinois. I want to thank you for tuning in. This is my 10-day uh, Facebook e-learning series for educators, right? Let's get right into it. Listen, the book is out, Breaking the Education Code, the instructional guide for enhancing teacher capacity while increasing scholar achievement. Please make sure that you go to my website, LaRueMFitch.com. Again, that is LaRueMFitch.com for ordering information. Again, Breaking the Education Code, the instructional guide for enhancing teacher capacity while increasing scholar achievement. The book is out. Please make sure that you go to my website to this evening, right? And I'll make sure first thing in the morning, I'm at the post office to ensure that I ship your books off. Listen, just a little recap from yesterday. We talked about teachers acting as facilitators in the classroom, which is a phenomenal instructional strategy. If you're able to utilize that with fidelity, that allows scholars to take ownership of the classroom. When you talk about having collaborative conversation and in the midst of that, teachers are walking around facilitating learning by probing for deeper understanding, just checking in, asking those different questions guiding scholars through the learning process. At the end of the day, get, being able to facilitate the learning so scholars can show what they know, being able to collaborate, as I said, with their peers and being able to articulate that information independently. Please make sure that you go to my archive. I have tons of these videos from these last six days, right? In regard to this e-learning series, please make sure that you go to my archive. I have tons of these videos. Also, you can visit my website at LaRueAndFitch.com. Again, that is LaRue. And Fitch.com. This evening, this evening, we're going to talk about the, the Karen Hess Cognitive Rigor Matrix. I know I'm always talking about this. I'm also talking about it in my book. It is a phenomenal, phenomenal resource that you can utilize to kind of align the rigor, to talk about the rigor and different item analysis questions and things of that nature. So you can evaluate the effectiveness of your school building when we're talking about rigor. Because when you get feedback from some administrators or your coaches, they're always saying, well, the rigor's not there. The rigor's not there. This is a template that you can use so you can be able to say, okay, this is basically my rubric to um, use so I can evaluate the rigor of my questions, right? And, it, and it's great. It's a phenomenal template. And I want to share that with you guys this evening quickly. Also, I want to talk to you about conducting item analysis. And I have an example. I was able to go find this example um, in my library from a couple years ago that I used um, in a classroom. So I want you guys to look at this information. Let's talk about it. So again, let's get right into it. Any questions, comments, concerns, please make sure that you leave me feedback. If you are looking for a facilitator that can be there physically or that can be there remotely, please go to my website. LaRueAndFitch.com, or you can inbox me directly, right? Just inbox me directly, whatever you feel that's comfortable for you. Um, I specialize in culture, curriculum, as well as instruction, that data-driven instruction, you know, that project-based, problem-based, social justice, you know, curriculum that we're talking about, equity, equality. That's my area of focus. And when we talk about culture, I'm talking about restorative justice, restorative using those restorative practices techniques, um, making sure that we support our scholars so we can eliminate the primary to prison pipeline. So please, if you look, if you're looking for that facilitator, someone that can conduct that professional development, please make sure you message me immediately. Let's get right into it. Please, right now, before we get into it, right, please like and share this information. Press the share button and share it with everybody out there, okay? Go to all your groups that you're part of. Share this to members that you're, you know, your family members, friends. It doesn't matter. I want you guys to share this information because it's powerful. We need to get the message out there, okay? So I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to show you guys the Hess Cognitive Rigor Matrix and we're going to talk about it for this evening. Okay, so here's the Hess Cognitive Rigor Matrix, okay, and this is for ELA. And as you notice, right, at the left side of here, the revised Bloom's Taxonomy, you have remember, understand, apply, analyze. And at the top, you have recall, reproduce, um, you have skills and concepts, you have strategic thinking and reasoning, and you have extending thinking, right? Um, so when I'm, whenever I, you know, analyze data, analyze different levels of questions. I'm always using the Karen Hess Cognitive Rigor Matrix because it gives me a deeper understanding and it helps me guide to facilitate that collaborative conversation with that teacher, 
right? Because at the end of the day, what we have to do as we look at the Common Core State Standards, we have to increase our level of questionings, but we have to increase the complexity, right? Because we want our scholars to struggle productively. And as I said in a couple videos ago, I stated specifically, it doesn't matter how rigorous, the, the let's say how complex the read material is when we talk about Lexile level, we have to make sure students struggle and they struggle through the level of questions, right? We want to move them from a basic DOK level one recall, reproduce to more of a DOK level four, which is extended thinking, because as you extend your thinking, you're able to take one skill and concept and apply that to multiple disciplines, right? So let's look at this um, Hess Cognitive Rigor Matrix, right? So you see at the top, it says, remember, and a lot of our questions that we're looking at and when we want to give that critical feedback for remember, retrieve information from long term memory, recognize, recall, locate, identify. So let's kind of think about our levels of questions that we're giving our scholars. Are they the what, when, where, how questions where they, all they have to do is just go back and recite the information from the text or is it more of extending thinking? Right. So some of the areas under webs that can align to this is recall information recognize, locate basic facts, details, events, ideas, explicit in text, read words orally and connected text with fluency and accuracy. So I want you guys to really think about that when we're looking at our different levels of questions and we're saying that our scholars are struggling productively. How are they struggling productively when all they have to do is go back into text and cite the information and locate it? Right. We're, we're, I know we're trying to just, you know, we want to check for understanding, but 90 percent of our text cannot just be Webb's DOK level one questions. Right. We can't just say, remember this, remember this. What we need to do is start looking at the, let's say, move from the remember and go from the understand and then kind of change the level of questions. Instead of saying recall the information, how about you identify and describe it? Even though that is considered DOK level one, recall and reproduce, we can increase the risk by moving it to what? Level two. You know, explain this. Show relationships. So that's, that's text to self, text to text. We can even extend it a little further. Go to DOK level three, where you want them to explain and then generalize what you think the text is trying to say. Identify, make an inference, right? I want you guys to really think about that. And then if you want to extend it a little further than that, under understanding, you can take them to extended thinking, where you want them to develop a generalization based on the results obtained or strategies used and apply them to new solutions. I want you guys to really think about that, right? When we talk about having these small groups in our classrooms, which we call strategy groups, groups and we want to make sure that we give everybody equal opportunity and I'm always saying this when I'm coaching teachers right as I coach teachers we shouldn't just have one level of objectives and listen up this is another thing I forgot to mention right when we talk about our learning objectives our ended minds right the learner will be able to cite information from the text explicitly blah 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 those type of objectives we should have sub objectives you should have your major objective so if we have the common core let's say RL which is reading literature 3.1 which is textual evidence if we have that common core state standard we should have sub standards under that right because what we want to do was give scholars multiple opportunities. What I used to do, right, in the classroom, depending on the type of common core type of um, standard that we're working on, I'll make sure that I have the basic standard, which is a remember, you know, objective. Then I'll have an understand, then I have an apply, and then I have an analyze under the same recall or reproduce. Right. But then when you think about it, it's great because you give scholars multiple opportunities. You may have a kid in your classroom that may not understand, they, they're not there when you're talking about identify specific information from a graphic or, uh, or some sort of representation. They don't know how to read charts and graphs. So you want them to recall the information right there that's explicit in the text. So you want to give them a remember objective, right? But as you see some of your scholars that may be on the higher level and you want to make sure you engage those scholars, and think about this out there for a lot of us that's taking the NWEA and we want to talk about maximizing our growth and increasing our rigor. We have to have opportunities to push our students that's over the 50th percentile, even the ones at the 90th and 100 percentile. Because as we said, understanding, being able to develop generalizations and apply different skills and concepts, right, to multiple disciplines, that takes your scholars that's at that top tier 90 to 100 percentile and that's able to keep them going, right, because learning doesn't stop. We want to and keep on keep them going so you're able to probe them deeper so what i look when i think about the hess cognitive rigor matrix i'm saying this is a great way to differentiate your different levels of questions right so a lot of my coaches that are out there 
I want you guys to really think about this, right? Think about this, coaches out there. You're able to take this form, this resource, and be able to have this productive conversation with the te with with your teachers that you're actually coaching, and then giving them feedback on how they can increase the rigor. For a lot of my parents out there, I want you to look at the different levels of questions or homework that's coming home and look at the Hess Cognitive Rigor Matrix and then ask your child, is this a DOK level one or level four? And then when you have parent-teacher conference, you can ask that question like, so what are we doing to increase the complexity within this question? And that teacher's going to say, what? You've been talking to Mr. Fitch, right? I want you guys to really think about this because we should service this for our teachers. Our students should be knowledgeable of this and our families have to be knowledgeable because when we all come to, come to the table, we should have productive conversation. So let's take a little step further, okay? So this is our Hess Cognitive Rigor Matrix. So what I was able to do is pull up a question here. What is the little dog's reaction to mom's words? Okay, buddy, I, I guess you're it. So when I'm looking at what is the little dog's reaction? And I'm taking this different, you know, that has cognitive rigor matrix. I'm saying, okay, this is what, when, how, understand the information, DOK level two. So then my feedback to the teacher is what can we do to take it from understand, which as we said was a what type of question and increase the rigor so we can go all the way to DOK level four. What can we do that? So once you're able to provide that conversation and that support to the teachers and they can see the information and can have the rigor on the side, this rigorous rubric on the side, then they'll be able to generate a, a formulate a response that can probe the students, right? Because you're building their capacity. You can't sit down, coaches, okay? You can't sit down with our teachers and just say, well, that's not a rigorous question because that's your inference. But with this resource guide, right? That has cognitive rigor and matrix, I guarantee you'll be able to talk about, listen, this is right here, but what we need to do is move our babies right here, right? And I looked at, and when you talk about the different levels of questions, guess what? We are right here for this one, okay? And we start off the beginning of the year, but look at us right here. We're all the way down here, right? We're creating. We're talking about project-based learning, right? And this is a phenomenal resource. I want you guys to make sure that you research this. And if you want to gain a deeper understanding, please make sure that you go to my website to purchase my book. I talk about um, the Hess Cognitive Rigor Matrix to the T right here on page 85, right? We really go in depth when I talk about the Hess Cognitive Rigor Matrix. So please make sure you go to my website this evening to purchase the book. Last but not least, okay, I was able to go into my archive and I found me an item analysis example. And this is great. You can use this for whatever, whatever grade level because when I have conversations with teachers, and let's say if I'm a, I'm a teacher and I'm working with another teacher, right, and we're collaborating and we're sitting there looking at the different levels of questions by using the Hess Cognitive Rigor Matrix, but we're having an in-depth um we're having an in-depth conversation when it comes to different questions that the students got correct, that they didn't correct, didn't get correct. We need some type of format. So this is an example of a template, and I can share these resources with you guys out there. Make sure you inbox me, and I talk about this in my book as well. Please inbox me. I have no problem with sharing these uh, resources with you electronically, okay? So when I look, when I put this together, this is from an Excel sheet. Now, we do have systems out there that can generate the responses, but there's nothing like being original. There's nothing like taking the data, breaking it down, looking at the students' names, going through the levels of questions, and being ready to, and then you're ready to have a production. Up the conversation. So over here, you know, we have the students' names over on this side, right? So let me sit, hold on, let me make sure that you guys can see this. I want to make sure we have a clear understanding of this. Okay, great, great. So here on the left, we have the students' names, right? Over here, this blue um, corner right here says multiple choice, total correct, right? So these are the ones that they got correct. And then over here, it says multiple choice, right? And this is the percentile, right? So these are the ones that they are correct, and these are the percentiles. At the top over here, what you notice is that I have the different levels of questions, right? I'm sorry, the different questions, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And I also have the substandards from the Common Core State Standards up there. Underneath there are the correct answers, right? And there are bolded. These are the correct answers answers. It is phenomenal. Thank you, Don. I'm glad that you received your book. Thank you so much. Please share that information. So when I'm having conversations with teachers and I'm looking at these results, the first thing I'm going to notice is that, okay, let's look at question nine. I'm saying the correct question, the correct response is A. However, when I'm looking at the trends in here, I'm noticing that a lot of students pick D. Right. And then I'm seeing that only 11 percent of the class got that correct. That's an issue. Only two students out the whole class got that that, you know, got that question correct. 
That's the issue. So what we need to do is go back to the actual question. So let's just pretend for the sake of the conversation this evening. Here's my actual test. This is the test. These are the results. Item analysis. Let's look at the questions. Let's look at the results. Everybody chose D. Let me see what's going on with D. Why do you think they chose D? And remember, when we talk about coaching, we use the ISO, instruction, curriculum, environment. Then we talk about the learner. And then from there, I'm like, okay, well, we're noticing that, oh, it's a word that we didn't get to. Or there's a, a skill in there that we didn't get to. Okay, let me go back to your lesson plans. Now we pull up the lesson plans. Now I'm searching through the lesson plans. Did we prepare the scholars? Because this is, if this is a summative assessment, we should have built their capacity to the end of the week. Was this indicated in your lesson plan? Right. Yes, it was indicated in my lesson plan. OK, great. So it was in your lesson plan. So for the sake of the conversation, let's now move to an action plan. So this is where we introduce the corrective instructional action plan where teachers are able to take the data to make sure they go back through this type of question because they want to have a similar question that the, that that's aligned to this one right here to make sure that we ask that we go through this as a formative assessment which can be your bell ringer or it can be some sort of exit ticket, right? And that's how you adjust accordingly. You provide scholars with instruction, high leverage instructional strategies so they can be successful. So when they see this type of question again, guess what? They'll get it right, right? And then you want to go in depth with them because not only do you want to expose them to the question on a basic level, you also want to take them to the extended thinking so they're able to, they're able to take that type of skill and concept and apply it to multiple disciplines. That's it. So it has cognitive rigor matrix, man. I'm telling you, I've been using it for years. And it's a great, great resource when you're talking about argumentative writing. Again, please go to my website this evening. Evening, I have tons of videos on there. Um, and also to purchase the book, I will make sure I sign and send it right through um, the postal services tomorrow morning. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Please like this information. Share this information. You have any comments, concerns, please make sure that you see me that you send me feedback. Tomorrow, we're talking about the four disciplines of execution, which is a great progress monitoring system that you can utilize in your building, right? And if we can talk, and we're gonna talk about the cascade effect. So I'm giving you guys a lot of insight as we go through these this health crisis that is currently happening here in America. Make sure you tune into this information. Again, every single night, Monday through Friday, that is, weekdays, 7 p.m., right? Central Standard Time. Make sure that you um, share this information, like this information, and leave me feedback. You guys have a wonderful, productive evening. And guess what? I just broke the education code. Peace.